You will recognize this example as one we did earlier, finding the electric field inside a non-uniform volume of charge. But this time we're going to find the potential everywhere in space. But first of all, a quick review of how to find the electric field. The volume charge density being delta r to the fourth. So we said Q is the integral of all the dQs, which is the addition of all the rho dVs, which is the addition of all the rho 4 pi r squared drs. Those were the, the volumes of the thin-shelled elements. So we've gone from dQ clear over to drs, which is what we want to do so we can do the integral. And so we have a bunch of stacked thin-shelled volumes. And so we carry out this integral, bring the constant delta out, and also the 4 pi delta. We have the integral of r to the sixth, which gives us r to the seventh. And we do the integral. And our result was that the charge enclosed, or I should say, better not use the word enclosed, we don't have a Gaussian surface yet, but the full total charge of the sphere, 4 sevenths pi delta r to the seventh. And then the electric field for our inside the sphere, Gaussian surface, the total charge, 4 sevenths pi delta r to the 7. E is Q enclosed over epsilon 0. 4 sevenths pi delta r to the 7 is the little r now to the 7 over epsilon 0 a. Gives us the result for the E field inside. And then outside, we pick a Gaussian surface outside, and we do the same thing. Q encloses all of it, so now you see the big R instead of the little r over the same surface area formula. And we get that E is delta big R to the 7 over 7 epsilon 0 R squared. So there's our E field, and now let's move on to the potential in all of space. Well, now let's find the potential associated with, with this goofy blue sphere. We're going to start by just considering what the potential is at R, at the, the surface or the edge of this sphere. We've already solved for the charge enclosed, right? So the basic idea is that the potential is integrating the E field, and we integrate it from where we are to the reference position. The reference position is infinity. So with respect to infinity, in other words, what is the potential at the surface with respect to infinity? With respect to our reference position, which for a sphere is infinity. So r to infinity at b dot dl will give us our coveted answer. The E field was just determined again sigma r to the seventh over s <laughs> delta r to the seven over seven epsilon zero and then we have the r squared inside the radicand so that's it and let's do the integral negative delta r to the seven over seven epsilon zero one over r r to infinity gives us one over infinity minus one over r and there it is the potential of this sphere with respect to infinity is delta r to the 6 over 7 epsilon 0. This is really abstract, isn't it? Well, in any case, you're used to that. Let me show you a little trick now. We can figure out this potential by considering this sphere as a point charge. So we're going to look at it and say, hmm, sphere, you look like a point, which indeed it does from a distance away. And its effect on the universe, the, outs, the universe on the outside of it is the same as if it's just a point charge. So let's dredge up our formula for a point charge, which is kq over r. So that's k. Probably shouldn't be using k now. I don't want you to anymore. <clears throat> 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. I'll convert it. 4 pi delta r to the 7 over 7 and over r. So that should be the answer. Let's see. There it is expanded. And sure enough, delta r to the 6 over 7 epsilon 0. So 
This is a good useful trick, so to speak, but different geometries will not quite work in the same way. If you're ever confused, if you're ever uncertain, you can always go back to this very robust fundamental def definition of potential difference and integrate the E field across the region of space in question. And now I want to look at the potential at r is equal to zero. Now you might find that a little strange thinking, why didn't I just start with that? That's certainly the very easiest thing, isn't it? Just to start at zero. Certainly that's simple. Well, it, it's actually not treating it Considering it at, as a whole at the surface is actually the simplest, probably. In the center, well, what we've got to do is consider the same basic idea that we did before, which is integrating the E field from where we are out to infinity. So we're starting here, and we're going to integrate the E field across here and then across from the surface to infinity. So we've got two parts. So V. The V I'm talking about now is at r is equal to zero, is zero to r of the field inside. We integrate that, and then we add the integral from r to infinity of e dot dl, which we already did. So we already have this value. Thank you. But zero to r, the e field we discovered, delta r to the fifth over seven epsilon zero, dr, plus this one, which was delta r to the sixth over seven epsilon zero. So the first part here, delta over 7 epsilon 0, r to the 6 over 6, plus the other piece, and we have delta r to the 6 over 42 epsilon 0, plus delta r to the, delta r to the 6 over 7 epsilon 0, which gives us delta r to the 6 over 6 epsilon 0. Very interesting, it's a little bit more potential at the center than it is at the edge. This is what it is at the edge. There's more, there's a higher potential at the edge. I mean, in the center by a little bit. Because when we integrate the E field across here, there's a potential difference. The potential difference actually is, the potential is diminishing. The E field is in this direction, and therefore the, the potential is going down or going the other way. We had it at the surface, delta r to the 6 over 7 epsilon 0 at the surface. Now as we go against the E field, we're rising in potential so that it rises this much more and we have this final potential at the center of the sphere. Well now I want to give you an alternate way to think about the potential at the center of a sphere. We know that potential is a scalar. So say I have a point here and there's a bunch of charges at different places in space. The potential associated with each of those, with the entire charge di distribution, point charges or whatever else, their potentials add at the point in question. It doesn't matter which direction they are, <laughs> they add. So in a similar way, we can find the potential in the center of the sphere by considering this sphere being an infinite collection of shells of charge. So we're going to add up all the differential potentials from the thin shells that go on forever inside here, so to speak. So we have an infinite collection of spherical shells of charge, and the V in the center is the addition of all the Vs of the thin shells. So let's pretend we have a thin shell. Here's one thin shell right there. To get the potential of that shell, we we have an E field associated with that shell, and we need to integrate the E field from there to infinity. We keep doing that for all the shells. Well, we started at the center, infinite, infinitesimally small shell, an infinitesimally small radius here. So we're basically, when we, when we integrate from there out to infinity, and then the next one out to infinity, the next one out to infinity, etc., we've done the same thing as taking this entire charged sphere and integrated the E field from its entirety from zero out to infinity. So what that comes down to then is the potential in the center is k q over r type of thing, the addition of all the q over r. So it's integral of dq over r. And dq will be the charge of the thin shell. So that's rho d volume 
better say volume. In addition to the V, or we'll get it mixed up with potential. <laughs> so differential volume, rho dB. So K, one over four pi epsilon zero. We're gonna integrate from zero to R because we're just looking for the dQs. We don't go to infinity. You know, the, the, the Qs, the dQs stop at R, right? Rho, which is delta R to the fourth. And then we have the one over R, the volume four pi R squared dr. So that's our integral. That will add up all the thin shells. So it simplifies real quick to this, giving us an R to the sixth over six. And there's a result, delta R to the sixth over six epsilon zero, which is the same thing we got, taking this entire thing and integrating it from zero to the edge, and then again from the edge to infinity. So the final thing I want to consider is what's the potential from a location inside this spherical non-conductor with non-uniform charge density. What is the potential at some location R inside here? All right, well, we approach it the same way. We integrate the E field from that location to infinity. The so first integral, Notice it's not zero to r, it's r to r, because we're starting here at r. I don't care where along here. I'm going to go out to infinity. Plus r to infinity e dot dl, which we've already get derived before. We solved that before. So the first one, delta r to the fifth over seven epsilon zero from r to r, plus delta r to the sixth over seven epsilon zero. So this first integral, Delta over 7 epsilon 0 r to the 6th over 6. This is going to become 42. So we have delta over 42 epsilon 0, big r to the 6th, minus little r to the 6th, plus this other piece. Now, I'm going to factor out delta over epsilon 0. Notice it's in both terms here. So we have r to the 6 over 42, plus there's r to the 6 over 7, and then minus r to the 6 over 42. So hope you agree that's correct. It's just algebra here. And then factor out a 7. Well, this becomes a 6. This becomes a 1. So r to the 6 over 1 is 6 r to the 6 over 6 minus r to the 6 over 6. Combined terms, the big R's at least, we have we have 1 plus 6 is 7, 6, r to the 6, then minus little r to the 6 over 6 gives us our answer for the potential from some radius inside this sphere. Delta over 6 epsilon 0, big r to the 6, minus 1, 7, little r to the 6. Isn't that a nice looking equation for our potential for this situation? So that's a good summary of how to Find not only the electric field, but then the potential in all space for such an entity.